Greetings viewers and welcome back to my channel and today's video is actually a little bit of humble pie for me. I should have done this at the last video that I had this amplifier apart, but here we go. You've seen this in previous videos. This is my PV VB2 tube base amplifier and I had recently had cleaned this up, did a lot of work on it. I did the fuse modification and installed a nice new set of Electro Harmonix 6CA7 big bottle power tubes and new preamp tubes, 12 AX7s, two of them, and then a 12 AT7 for the phase inverter. And when I got this all put back together, it sounded great, no problems, and it actually still sounds really good. But what I should have done while I had this thing apart at the level I did was I should have changed out the filter capacitors. And the reason why I am going to change them out is because I'm starting to hear a low level hum that is not affected by the volume. It is present whether the volume's all the way down or all the way up. But what I don't hear that buzzing coming from is when I hear it from the DI out. I've done other videos with this amplifier and that signal is extremely clean, which tells me that I do not have a problem in the preamp anywhere. I actually have an issue with the power section that runs the tubes. This is a classic case of Murphy's Law. I should have changed out these power capacitors when I had the chance. I didn't think to do it. I figured it wasn't required, but What's happening is that here we have these power capacitors. These are basically what's happening is that the transformer will step it up to about 550 volts uh, AC. It'll go through these little diodes here to rectify it into DC and dump it into these caps here. These are your filter capacitors. This is what smooths the AC waveform after it's rectified. So you get pulsating DC and this capacitance here is usually pretty large. Each of these are 470 microfarads each rated up to 350 volts and they're connected in series, which means that you increase the farad rating when they're increased, uh, connected in series, I mean, and you have two sets. So you're not only increasing the farad rating when they're in series, but you have two of them in parallel with each other, which is also going to increase the voltage rating. So instead of 350 volts, you have more close to 700 volts, which is more than enough to handle the 550 volts coming in from the transformer. Like any electrolytic capacitor, those tend to fail sooner rather than the other types of uh, substrates like tantalum or polymer film. The electrolytic capacitors have a substrate inside like a paste and it eventually dries out and you can hear filter capacitors starting to become weak or fail when you start hearing that 120 hertz buzzing. It's double the frequency of your mains frequency or if you live in the UK for example you hear that you have 50 hertz mains frequency and then you hear 100 hertz buzzing coming from your rectifiers because you have two banks of rectifiers firing to rectify that AC into DC, thus it's double the mains frequency, and that's what you're hearing when the filter caps start to fail. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to replace all the main capacitors here. So these four, these two, and these three. I did get all the other electrolytic capacitors. I'm likely gonna change those. These have to do with the voltage over to the V1 and V2 for their, for their uh, plate voltages. And then the rest here is for the suppressor, uh, more decoupling, I believe. I'm not really sure. I'm still kind of learning how a tube amp works myself, but the shotgun method is not always the best thing to do when you are trying to figure out these kinds of problems. I am going to start off with just changing out these filter capacitors first, and if I don't hear any more buzzing, I'm going to leave it at that, because if I start changing out everything, you know, and something doesn't work, then it's going to be much harder for me to figure out and pinpoint well, where did I go wrong? So power capacitors first, and if everything's good, we'll move forward and put it back together. If not, we'll continue to change everything else out because these capacitors probably are not under near as much stress, these smaller ones, as these big ones are. Thankfully, I have the bill of materials and the schematics for this amplifier, so looking up all the capacitor ratings uh, was pretty straightforward, but what was the more difficult and more tedious thing to do is to actually be measuring each of these capacitors physically with some digital calipers because you're trying to match a footprint of what these capacitors will fit in on the board, and a lot of times that is a 
challenge because there's so many different varieties. You could have a 470 microfarad cap, but it could be a couple millimeters taller. It could be a couple millimeters wider. And taller may not be so much of an issue because I still have a couple millimeters of space to play with before it reaches the bottom plate here. But width-wise, that is a problem because it only fits in this footprint here. That is probably the biggest challenge for me looking up these parts because that's what takes the most time is trying to match the size not so much the tolerance and the specs but i was able to do that i spent about 45 dollars in parts for all of the electrolytic capacitors pertaining to the power supply and the suppressors and the plate voltage for the preamp tubes that's all i'm really focused on because most of the time you're not going to have to replace these little tiny capacitors because they're not actually doing so much filtering as they are decoupling the circuit so that it's for electrical reasons it's not as labor intensive let's say the big, biggest stressed out capacitors are these big ones i've gone ahead and done a little bit more disassembly removed the two preamp tubes here and taken all the screws off the top that holds the preamp board in place and it's a little tricky to do because the way that it sits in there you have to get these potentiometers to clear this lip here and the way you need to do it is slide it back very carefully don't hurt this ribbon cable you'll have to push these output transformer wires gently out of the way and then you should be able to lift up and then slide these pots past the lip and then you can lift it up like so and i didn't have to remove or disconnect anything be careful while you're doing this. You don't want this board to flex or anything like that. And plus, this is a very, very good opportunity to inspect the bottom of the board here, look for any broken traces, any cold solder joints. And right now I'm seeing that the board is actually in pretty good shape, maybe a little dirty. I can now get access to the bottom here and desolder all the filter capacitors. This tube amplifier does have bleed resistors for all the main filter caps. I know that it's dead. I've already confirmed it. I can do this. Not a problem. Always make sure that the capacitors are discharged before you start working on it. Again, safety first. Voltages inside a tube amplifier will kill you or at the very least give you one hell of a shock. I'll get you guys set up here on a tripod on the next segment once I get the parts, but Sizing up the job here to this next step. I don't think that these caps are going to be a problem at all. I could just desolder the solder points here and these should lift right up off the board. These larger filter capacitors though might be a little bit more tricky. I have to heat up this glue to release it from the board here and hopefully that won't be a big problem. And then the rest of these smaller capacitors too uh, will be the same as these over here. It won't be if they can just lift off the board once the solder has been released. Here we are, it's a new day. I did a little bit more work in preparation before I get the parts, which were delayed. I'm still waiting. It should be in today, keep my fingers crossed. But I did remove all of the filter capacitors from the board and I'm stopping there for right now because I don't wanna mix up the smaller ones. And what I was able to find, and I, I think I pretty much found my problem, this capacitor right here is bad because when i measure it uh, now while all these capacitors measure within their 20 percent tolerance this particular one actually has a dc resistance of about 16 kilo ohms while the rest of them show infinite ohms you're not supposed to have a dc resistance or it's going to be a very high dc resistance and 16 kilo ohms is actually kind of low for a capacitor these capacitors are well over 15 years old at this point, so I know that they need to be changed. And finding that DC resistance on the one of them proves that it needs to be changed out. Here is the amplifier all put back together. I just got the new Nikolon capacitors all installed. And then these are the small ones here, one, two, three, four, and five. Now, the only thing that I have left to do is to power it up. I have my multimeter ready for checking the bias of the tubes here. When I power everything up, I still got to connect my speaker cabinet, but I am very happy how this is going so far. But I'm going to call it a night here, and in the next segment, I will fire this up and see if I did this right.
one more quick note you really can't see it too well but i did put some silicone adhesive on all the capacitors so that they are firmly attached to the board here and for those that are interested this is the stuff i'm using as you can see it is a neutral curing silicone and that's the kind that you need for pcb type of work here we are it's a new day got the amplifier all put back together i was able to double check the power tube bias off camera i do apologize i wasn't able to film that and it was it's supposed to be 26 milliamps per tube per the recommendation of john fields but it turns out that the current and it's a good thing i checked it was actually far less it was about 22 milliamps per tube and that tells me that the capacitors were causing that bias circuit to draw more current than it needed that's just even further vindication that those capacitors had to be changed now, what I'm going to do here is I have my amplifier and the cabinet all set up. I also have my uh, little multi-effects pedal set up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to power it up. And I'm going to show you the final result and see how it sounds. So what we're going to do, let's turn it on. You hear a little minor buzzing, which that's from the transformer. And you're probably hearing... The tubes are starting to warm up so we'll give this a few minutes and then we'll take it off standby all right we've let this warm up for about three four minutes now we're going to take it off standby now before i used to get uh, a pop sound when i hit it off standby now it's far less pronounced if barely there at all and there you go now what you are hearing is a very quiet amplifier but there is one thing that you'll likely notice and you may not be able to hear it too well because of all the background noise you hear my computer running you hear my hard drive running i'm going to put the camera right up to the now at the master volume on zero here's the master volume at five and now the master volume all the way up at ten See how that buzzing goes away? And then it goes away at zero. There's an interesting reason why that is happening. It took me a little while to actually research it on the internet before I finally figured it out and looked at the schematics. But that is normal, and that is something that really cannot be helped with this amplifier, and you're not going to hear it when you're playing anyway. But I found it very interesting just the same, and here's the reason for that. I was going to show schematics and go through how everything's routed and whatnot, but I'm going to s refrain from doing that as much as I can because the buzzing that you're hearing is so insignificant, it's not going to really make a difference at all. You're not going to hear it while you're playing. But the reason why the Cliff Notes version is that there is no operational amplifier after this master volume pot before it goes to the phase inverter or v3 tube the 12 at7 inside and what's happening is because this pot has such a high resistance this is a one mega ohm pot and at five you're getting what's called an high impedance coupling effect so there's noise somewhere in the preamp and then there's noise in the power amp at some point this high impedance is causing that hum to come through your speakers but when you get to it's extreme part of the travel that impedance is the lowest and then a low impedance means that you're not going to get that noise coming through that noise is canceled out the only way that you can kind of deal with that a little bit this effects loop is tapped right off of the master volume pot right afterward and v2 is right before it this does not have an operational amplifier running the effects loop so keep that in mind so if you have any kind of long cable runs you're going to get this problem that i'm talking about much worse you need to have a buffer an active buffer in the effects loop to drive long cords if that's how you have your equipment set up because now i have this digital pedal here it's a digitech bp200 yeah it's a nice pedal it's not the best but it, it works and what will happen is if i go listen closely there's your buzzing I'm gonna... there is now it's in now it's in circuit 
you're getting a little bit of white noise because that's just the nature of this pedal, but listen closely. You hear white noise, volume at five, volume all the way at 10. Buzzing is gone. Now you're just hearing the white noise. I could f easily find another buffered pedal that has a lot quieter noise floor, but now the master volume pot works as it should without any noise. That's because the buffer, which is directly tapped through the wires here at the pedal, and this effects loop, since it doesn't have a buffer, is now keeping the impedance low after this master volume, and now no more buzzing. Seems like an oversight on the way that this was designed, but this is kind of the nature of a tube amp, high impedance world. That's how it goes. So just wanted to mention that. I know I got a little bit more involved than I wanted to on this particular point, but good information to have, right? Well, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. As always, if I had to take one thing away from this project, don't do it halfway. I had to take this amplifier apart a second time because I didn't change out the filter capacitors the first time when I had swapped out the tubes and done all the cleanup and restoration. I talked about it in my first video. I should have done it then. But now that I have, this amplifier is good to go for at least the next 10 to 15 years before I would need to change out those capacitors again. It's got good quality Japanese Nichicon capacitors inside, very well-known well brand and reliable. And very excited to be able to have this running at 100% again. Very quiet. And it's going to be loud. I <laughs> love it. If there are any questions or anything that you would want to see in the future with this amplifier or any tube amplifier in general, I'm still learning about tube amplifiers every day. This has become one of my power hobbies as of recently. But I love to learn about these kinds of things. And it's just been a lot of fun for me, and I hope it's been a lot of fun and enjoyable for you guys watching. Thanks again for the support. Till the next video.